Hey guys, in this video we're going to be learning about the convex lens. I'm going to show you how to draw ray diagrams with the convex lens and we're also going to be looking at how the image is going to be formed based on different object positions. Now if you enjoy videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe and if you've learned something from this video, please help to support me by hitting that like button. It really does help. Now let's just get into the video. If you draw a line at the center of the lens and we take the position exactly in the middle, this is known as the optical center. And if we draw a line that is perpendicular to the lens, then this is called the principal axis. Now, when light is coming from a distant object, so these represent rays of light coming from an object. When light comes from very far away, they reach the lens almost parallel to one another, like this. When it passes through the lens, light is going to be refracted and for a convex lens, the convex lens is going to focus all the light to one single point here. So the light has all been converged to this point. And this point here is given the designation F, which stands for focal point. This is known as the focal point of the lens. The distance between the optical center and the focal point is known as the focal length. So these two are not to be confused. F, small f is focal length, big F represents focal point, the single point where all light coming from a very distant object coming parallel to one another is going to be converged at. We have another reference point which is known as 2F. So 2F is simply a distance of two focal lengths from the optical center. We have to remember that light can come from the left but light can also come from the right side of the lens. And the same thing is going to happen. The convex lens is going to converge all the light into a single point. And this point is also the focal point. So we have focal point and 2F on both sides of the lens. Let's say we place an object in front of the lens at this position here. How we see an object is light has to bounce off the object and enter our eyes. This object is going to have infinite amount of light rays coming out of it. So infinite amount of rays of light is going to be bounced off the object. It is going to go through the convex lens and the convex lens is going to converge all the light onto a single point. Now notice that this is not the focal point. It only converges onto the focal point when light comes parallel to one another. When light rays are traveling parallel to one another entering the lens. In this case, all the rays of light are coming from an object that is not very very far away. So the rays of light are not going to be parallel to one another as they enter the lens. So it is converged onto this point and this is the point where the image is going to form, the image of this object. So if we look at where the light is originating from, the light is coming from the tip of the arrow which means the image of the tip of the arrow is going to be exactly at this point. So the same thing will happen for all the other points on the arrow as well. The infinite number of points on the arrow all are going to form here. And this is the final image that will be formed. Now if you look at all the light rays that are coming through, some of them seem very random. We cannot predict the path of the light ray after it passes through the lens for some of them. For example, if we look at all the green rays of light, we follow the first one, it goes up here in a seemingly random direction and then it goes down again to a seemingly random direction. We cannot predict where it is going to go. Same goes for this one as well as the one at the bottom. Now these are not useful for us to predict where the image will form if we place an object in front of the lens. However, there is a distinctive pattern when we look at the red rays of light. Now let's see what they are. So first, let's look at this, the blue one. If you look carefully, the light ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis. So when the light goes parallel to the principal axis and it enters the lens, then as it comes out on the other side of the lens, it is going to pass through the focal point. So this is one path of light that we can know for sure and we can easily draw. Now, the second path of light is the green path. If we look at it carefully, the ray of light is passing through the optical center. And as it passes through the optical center of the lens, 
it continues along the same path it does not change direction the third one is as it goes through the focal point before entering the lens after coming out of the lens it will travel parallel to the principal axis so this is exactly opposite to the first instance so parallel pass through f pass through optical center and pass through f parallel these are the three parts of the rays of light that we can track now image is formed at the point of intersection of all the rays so we only need two rays to intersect in order to know where the image is formed so we can use any one of these three parts to predict where the image is going to form where the image form and the characteristics of the image depends on the position of the object so if we look at this scenario this is u u is object distance object distance is taken from the optical center to the object and when we define object distance we always do it in reference to the number of focal lengths either one or two focal lengths so for this case this is further than 2f this means that the object distance is greater than two focal lengths. So we take the distance from the object to the optical center. Let's look at the image. Image distance is given the sign V. Image distance, we can see this image is in between F and 2F, which means the image distance is actually between one and two focal lengths. It is greater than one focal length, which is this length, but it is less than two focal length. So it is in between. Let's look at the image characteristics of this image. First of all, we can clearly see that it is inverted. So inverted means this is the upright position. Then you can see the top is at the bottom here. So it is inverted. Secondly, we can see that it is diminished in size. It has become smaller relative to the object. Then it is a real image. Now there is a difference between real image and virtual image. Real image is an image that is actually there. That means if we were to place a screen at where the image is meant to form, we could see the image. The image will form on the screen because it is actually there. Because two rays of light are actually converging at that point. They are actually meeting. So this is a real image. A virtual image is such as the image of yourself in a mirror. When you look into a mirror, we see an image of ourselves somewhere behind the mirror but if we were to place a screen behind the mirror we would not get an image of ourselves because the image is not really there it is a virtual image our mind only perceives to see the image there it is not really there so let's say we move this object closer to the lens let's bring it to exactly 2f let's draw the ray diagram to see where the image is going to form so we can use two out of the three possible parts that we know for sure. So first, we use parallel to principal axis. After it passes through the lens, it's going to go through F. The second ray of light we can draw is through the optical center. These are the easiest to do. And the image will form at the point of intersection. So here, this is where the image is going to form. This time, the object distance is exactly two focal lengths. And when the object distance is exactly two focal lengths, the image distance is also exactly two focal lengths. Now, let's study the characteristic of image. First of all, we can see that it is still inverted. Image is inverted. The size is exactly the same as the object. This is a special characteristic when the object is placed at exactly two focal lengths from the lens. And the object is real. There are two rays of light that are actually converging here. So the image is real. So let's bring it even closer. Let's bring the object to somewhere between one and two focal lengths from the lens. Now let's see where the image is going to form. We do the same thing. We draw a line parallel to principal axis and then through the focal point and another one that goes through the optical center. Now we can see the image is going to form at this point here. Let's look at the object distance. The object distance is now between 1 and 2 focal lengths because the object is placed between F and 2F. And the image distance here is greater than 2 focal lengths. Whenever we mention object and image distance, we always mention with respect to the focal lengths, either 1 or 2 focal lengths. 
So let's study the characteristics of this image. First of all, it is still inverted. In terms of size, we can see that it is magnified. It is larger than the object. And it is a real image. If we place the screen here, we would be able to capture the image. Let's move even closer towards the lens. Let's bring the object all the way to the focal point. Let's see where the image is going to form. So we draw parallel to principal axis through the focal point and another ray through optical center. Now. This is a special case. So when the object distance is exactly one focal length, you can see that the rays are going parallel to each other, which means that they're never going to meet. So where is the image going to form then? Now we have to remember this is the position of the observer. The eye of the observer is here. So when we are looking on in this direction, the image is going to form behind the object here in this direction. So again, even when we extend the line behind, it is never going to meet. And so we say the image is actually at infinity. So the image distance is infinity. What are the characteristics of this image? This image is going to be upright because it is on the same side here. So therefore it will form upright. Then it is going to be magnified. It is much, much further away and it is virtual because two rays of light do not actually meet so there is no real image that is going to form there is one more object position that we can look at and that is if we bring it even closer so now we bring it at a distance of less than one focal length and let's see where the image is going to form so we do the same thing parallel to principal axis through the focal point through the optical center now once again you notice that these two rays of light are never going to meet the object distance here is less than one focal length again we extend backwards since it is not going to meet on the right side of the lens and we find that it actually does seem to meet on the left side of the lens on the same side of the object so when the observer is watching from this position it seems as if the image has formed here at the point where the light seems to meet the rays of light. So how do we characterize the image distance for object distance that is less than one focal length? We simply say that the image distance is greater than the object distance. Let's look at the characteristics of this image. So first of all, it is upright. Second, it is magnified. It is larger than the object. And thirdly, it is virtual because there are no two rays of light that are meeting here. We only perceive for two rays of light to be meeting here. They are not actually meeting. The rays of light are traveling on this side. So it is a virtual image. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've learned something, please don't forget to support me by hitting the like button. If you want to casually do a one minute learning every day, then you can follow my Instagram or TikTok accounts. The handles are in this corner. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video.